Hey guys, Chip Walters here, and I have some new news to share. I'm partnering with Ian Hubert to package and deliver some of his awesome products, many of which he's demoed and showed either on his YouTube or his Patreon accounts. The first product, which is especially exciting, is called the Steam K-Pack. A while back, Ian spent time creating some fantastic Steam videos using his camera and his own studio setup. He then meticulously edited them so that they would work as well as possible with his photorealistic workflow. And if you know Ian, he focuses on efficiency. And that way he can load a ton of these different Steam elements in the scenes without overloading the rendering. Another thing about Ian is he goes pretty fast, especially when it comes to demoing these types of things. He went over two different ways to create the node setups for using them in Blender, and it was all somewhat complicated. In fact, I had to spend a bunch of time just trying to figure out what was the best way to do this. Turns out, Ian figured both were the best way. More on that in a minute. So what I've done is created a Steam K-Pack for use with KitOps, both the free and pro version. And I've configured all 10 of Ian's animations into both different material directions for a total of 20 different inserts. And with KitOps, you just drag and drop them wherever you want them. It's really that easy. And there's no need to hook up material nodes or deal with fancy settings. They just work. And if you hook them up right, they can easily look 3D as they rotate with the camera view. So let's dive in a bit deeper. Okay, so here we are in Blender. And I've got pretty much a blank scene with just this slate texture. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the K-Pack. So the idea is that you're going to want to download them and unzip them. And you'll have a folder. And once you figure out where that is, you'll go into the Preferences. And for K-Pack, you'll go from General to the File Pass tab. Yours is not going to be as long as this, but you'll have this button that says Plus. And what that is, is we're going to add a K-Pack path. So I'm going to click on that, and I'll click on this little folder icon. And we'll navigate to where we downloaded the K-Pack. And here it is. It's called Ian Steam. And I'm going to double-click on that, and I'm going to keep double-clicking until I get to a place that has a blend file. And then I'm going to go up one level and accept it. And then I'll, of course, save my preferences and close this. And now, when I go over here, you'll see that at the very bottom, I have this thing called IH Steam. Click on that. Okay, so now we have the IH Steam K-Packs installed. And you can see we have a number of different K-Packs in here. There's this blank one, which is used when you're creating new K-Packs with KitOps Pro. So we won't use that one. Notice there are black and white ones, and then these blue ones. The blue ones are actually affected by color. Black and white are not affected by color. And we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is grab this column steam, which is a black and white one. And if I just hit add to insert, it's gonna set it in the middle of the scene like so and I've got auto scale turned off so it comes in at its natural resolution and as you can see it's just a plane with an animated movie in it and you can see as we move it around how it works I'm gonna move it over here just a little bit now I'm going to select the plane and I'm gonna grab this colorized one and I'm gonna press add insert now it's gonna track to wherever on the plane I want to put it so I'll put this one over here and if you notice, this one is turned around on that axis. So I'm going to just hit zero. And actually, believe it or not, the direction does matter in the coloring. So just, I'll mention that. Sometimes you'll see there's a little bit of difference in the coloring. So now that these are both going, you'll see that they're pretty much identical to each other. This one's a little bit dimmer. Now, if you want to adjust the color, you can go right into the shader editor. And this one we call the translucent shader. And if you want to adjust the color in the translucent shader, you click on the color and you adjust the value. And this, I'll say 1.3, and now it's roughly the same over here. If I go over here, and this one, if I want to adjust the color, it's quite a bit more difficult. In fact, I'll have to insert a color ramp, drop it in, and then grab this white one and adjust that value up. 1.5, and it'll adjust that. I can also change it to a color if I want. And that's how I can colorize this black and white one is I can just come in here and adjust in that color ramp. But we're gonna leave that alone right now. And also, if you wanna change the color here, you can come into that translucent and you can just, of course, adjust it there. So I wanna show you how these are affected by the lighting in the scene. So I'm gonna turn off this fill lighting and I'm gonna to go to this main lighting and I'm gonna choose a color in the main lighting. And as you can see, as I choose the color, this one over here takes on the color of the scene. 
and this one over here does not. And that's one of the big difference between these. I should mention a couple other things. Both of these render very fast in Eevee, as you can tell. This one on the right will render much slower in cycles, whereas this one only needs a sample of one to render in cycles. Okay, let's talk about something else. And what we'll do is I'm going to scale these up. And as you can see now, we still have the one with the letter C appended is on the right, and the black and white one is on the left. I'm going to grab this plane, I'm going to hit the tab button, and I'm just going to extrude this up. And then I'm going to take our light. Go into my EV settings, I'm going to set my shadow to non-soft shadows just so I can see. Take my light and I'm going to turn it into a point light with 10,000 on. And what I want to show you is that as you can see, this shadow cuts off our shader that is using the translucent shader. Now, if I take the white shader and move it in, you'll see it works just fine. But our translucent shader will completely change. We're going to see that demarcation as we go through there. If you know you're going to have shadows falling onto your steam object, then you're probably going to want to use the black and white one and not the C colored one. So what if you have two of the exact same steam objects? Well, let's go ahead and delete this and I'm going to take this and shift D on the X and move it over here. Now we have two objects that are the same and if I hit the space bar to turn on the animation we're going to see that they're both doing roughly the exact same animation which we may not want in the scene. Uh, we may want to have them be different. So how do we do that? How do we solve that problem? Well what we do is we need to understand that each one of these objects has the exact same material and because they have the same material they're going to act exactly the same. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to click over here on this little copy button and I'm going to make a copy of this column steam material. And now once I've done that we'll go in and we'll see that we have a new steam material here but we have two users of this new steam material. So if I just adjust the start frame you notice it still adjusts the start frame for, for both of these animations. So I need to change this to one. If I just click here, now when I adjust the start frame, I'm going to adjust the start frame for just the selected one. So the key there is create a new steam material and just set the number of users to one and then set the start frame to whatever you like. And then you have two seemingly different animations, but you're using the same video. So the last thing I want to talk about is using a constraint trip as we move around we can clearly see that these are two-dimensional planes, steam objects, and we may not want that. We, we may want to make them look more three-dimensional. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some more steam. Let's, let's try this slow diagonal. We'll select the ground plane, add the insert to this. Maybe scale it up a little bit, move it back. So you get an idea. Now we have some of the steam going on and I'll use the control alt numpad zero to give me a frame for my camera. And I'm going to basically say lock camera to view so I can move this around. Now, as we can see, we still have the problem with the two dimensions. So how we fix that is we're going to select one of our steam objects and we're going to go over here to the add object constraint and we're going to add a copy rotation. And in the copy rotation, we're going to choose the camera and then we're going to turn off x and y and so now as i move around you can see that stays in the same place it kind of actually looks like it's a volumetric steam so i'm going to take the rest of these this one and this one and lastly i'm going to click on this one so i hold the shift key down i clicked on all three of those i'll go under object constraints copy constraints to selected objects and now they're all set up that way. Now we have a way to set up our steam objects so they look like they're true volumes as we move the camera around. So that's it. I hope you try out the Steam K-Pack and find it as useful as I do. And I'll see you online.